What does it mean to be a virtuous man? What does it mean to be a good man? To be a man who does the right thing? I think our society needs virtuous men now more than ever. Right? And that's probably why I'm making this video. Another reason is because I realize that often when we ask ourselves these questions, we're, we come up short, right? We, well, what does it even mean to do the right thing? What does that even mean? Who, who determines what the right thing is anyway? Who says something is virtuous? Who's the arbiter of virtue in this case? And when we don't have answers to those questions, sometimes we're left in a bit of moral relativism, right? Or, or we just sort of, you throw your hands up in the air and say, well, you know, who, who says what's right and wrong here? What does it even mean to do the right thing here? You know, I'm just going to do what serves me. Like, I, that's all I can think of right now, right? Like, what, what's going to serve me best here? So I hope to leave you with perhaps a few rubrics or heuristics by the end of this video on <clears throat> what it actually means, what constitutes being a good man, being a virtuous man, all right? Not saying that I have it all figured out, but just some questions and frameworks that I use to ask myself when I'm making a decision that I think have helped me to perhaps bring about a little bit more virtue than I could I, I could be able to if I didn't have these frameworks or have these questions to ask myself. And the first major one of these I learned when I was 17. So I was in a relationship at this point with this girl that, you know, obviously I thought at, you know, we'd been together for two, two years basically at that point, right? So I was 15 to 17, I was with this girl. Of course, in my head, I was like, oh yeah, like, you know, this is it, this is the one, right? Um, and, you know, the relationship got to the point where it just was not tenable, right? Uh, it was not, it wasn't healthy anymore. Uh, there were just certain things that we couldn't work through. Now, I remember recounting this and, you know, towards the end, like we'd gotten together and, and split up, like split, split up a few times. And so it was just messy, right? And I was telling sort of the, the, the story and laying out what I thought I needed to do to a friend of mine. And essentially I came to the conclusion like, ah, oh, well, you know, yeah, maybe it's not that bad. Like, I'll just, I'll just like stick it out and like, I, like, I'll just try to, to do this thing. And I was basically, <laughs> my friend pointed out to me, he just kind of said, hey, Chris, it kind of sounds like you're just, like, you know what you need to do, but you're just taking the easy way out here. It was just a, you know, sort of passing observation. <clears throat> and I thought about it and I was like, like he's right <laughs> i i actually am just taking the easy way out here i actually know what i need to do it's not a matter of more information now at this point it it's just a matter of recognizing wow i'm actually just choosing the path of least resistance here and so that was the first that brings me to the first thing that i realized which is that really the easiest path in life is very often not the best path. Like we conflate the idea of the best, the best thing to do or the right thing to do. If we're not careful, we conflate that with the easiest thing to do, right? Because if you're not particularly conscious about it, your brain is going to want to avoid painful situations. So it's gonna look for the path of life that gives you the least drama, the least headache, the least effort that you have to put in, you know, the least difficult conversations that you're going to have with people, like you, you you're just going to avoid all of that if you're not thinking, right? So your brain is naturally going to choose that path. But the problem with that is that the easiest path available to you is more often than not really, really not the best path. Like there are some cases where it might be. But if you're confusing the ease or difficulty of a path with its relative value, then that's where you make a mistake, right? So I realized in that moment at 17 years old that, wow, I have this tendency to just pick the easiest thing, like least trouble, least difficulty, like, okay, I'm just going to do that. Fine. 
right? So I learned a painful, I, I painfully learned this lesson that I actually need to assess not just the pain that I'm going to experience now, but the pain that on this decision that this could bring me in the future, right? So there's my current state, my current well-being, <clears throat> and let's say the state and the well-being of the people around me, the people that I love. And then there is you and the and your loved ones tomorrow and next week and next month and next year, right? And because we as humans exist across time, it's not enough that you simply do something that is best for you today. It still has to be you still have to assess how good or bad or, or what effect this thing will have on you next week and next month and next year, right? You not only have to protect current you, but you have to protect future you. And you have to do what is right for future you and the future loved ones that you have. So that's where things get a little bit more complex, right? Because now you're doing calculations further out. And obviously, the further out you go, the less you know about it. So it's a bit more uncertainty. And so it can be overwhelming I just sit and try to predict is this going to be is this decision that seems good for me now in the short term there's not so much difficulty there's not so much pain but what is this going to bring me in the long term and thinking about that you might end up at a completely different decision because you might think ah i'm just delaying the pain right like i'm if I'm avoiding conflict, let's say, conflict avoided is pretty much means conflict multiplied. Right? It just means that you're pushing the problem further away. Oh, I don't want to deal with it now. Don't, I'll deal with it later. Right? Things build, things compound over time. So if you avoid something today, you avoid a difficult decision, you avoid a difficult conversation with somebody, you are dooming your future self, right? So this is one of those calculations that you have to make, right? and it's difficult, but when it comes to doing the right thing, like that can be, again, it's a difficult sum. It's a difficult thing to compute. What is the right thing to do here? Right? And so sometimes you need to, in doing that computation, you need to look at your life now, yes, but you also need to, to sum that across future versions of you. Like, is this actually still a good thing a year from now? So that's one question that I always ask myself in decision making that's really helped me when it comes to, you know, trying to do the right thing in any given situation is, am I just taking the easy way out here? Am I just taking the path of least resistance where I get to sit, like my brain gets to just sit in this little pain avoidance corner and not have to face up to difficult truths and harshness of reality am i just taking the easy way out that is a great question to ask yourself if you're posed with any kind of you know conundrum any kind of difficult situation All right and yeah, you might find that you take the easy way out a lot right but you have to do that computation of like what is actually going to at least for me it's okay what decision here is going to magnify the well-being, safety, sanity, happiness, etc., of the people that I love and the people that I care about, myself included, over the longest period of time. That is the question to ask yourself, right? And that, more often than not, once you're done with that computation and you get to the answer, that answer means the most pain in the short term. Like, I've found this at least to be the case is that every time I get to that answer and then I go, okay, so that's what I need to do. What does that look like in the short term? Fuck, it looks horrible in the short term. It looks like hell. It looks like going through a really difficult conversation with this person about this thing. It's probably gonna take hours and there's probably gonna be tears involved and there's probably gonna be huge emotions involved and there's probably like, it's normally fucking difficult, right? So. Those are some questions to ask yourself on that front, right? Sometimes I think doing the right thing or, or, or being virtuous, doing the virtuous thing in any given situation comes down to doing that computation. Sometimes it's 
just as simple as not taking the easy way out. Another question that's really helped me is if I'm making a difficult decision, trying to do the right thing, I'll ask myself, how, how truthful am I being by taking this path, by doing this thing, by saying this thing? How true is it? How is there a way I can be more aligned with the truth here? And if there is, what does that look like? <laughs> that question alone, I think has saved me from so many mistakes and has allowed me to, at least in my view, right, done much better in situations where I could have really messed things up by not being as truthful. Right, so like now we're kind of getting into the weeds a little bit about what what the what the right thing really is how do you quantify that how do you uh what do you measure it up against right if you're religious i mean this might be a little bit easier for you because you will have heuristics to measure up against right for example if you're a really really good christian you can ask yourself well what would jesus do here right like how would jesus handle this situation and you can use that as something to measure up against, right? As a benchmark, as a heuristic, as an ideal to strive towards, right? And so for me personally, I use truth. Truth is one of my, one of the things that I hold in highest regard. So how truthful am I being here? Is there a way I can be more truthful here? Am I lying about anything? If I take this path, if I make this decision, if I say this thing, is there any lie lying in that a, a lot of the time there will be and so you will need to winnow away and really hone in on what really is the truth of the matter here and again that's gonna be painful and so this is why naturally if you if we're just if you just leave your brain to its own devices it's not going to pick the, let's say, the path that isn't easy, like what we were talking about earlier. Or it's not going to pick the path that is most truthful. Because the truth is, you're probably lying to yourself about certain things. And then by extension, that means that you're lying to the people that you're talking to. And so you need to, if you ask yourself these questions and really want to know the answers, then you're going to need to undo the lies that you've been telling yourself about this situation. Right, that, oh, it's okay that I'm, you know, working this job that I really don't like because, you know, all I have to because of this, that, and that. Like, you've, you've spun this web, right? It's okay that I'm not all that I could be because, well, well, this thing victimized me. I, I, well, I'm a victim, so, you know, it's okay. It's okay that I'm a loser and that I don't have my life together. Like, you've spun this web in your head. And so, undoing that is painful because you don't know what's going to be left of you after that you don't sometimes it's scary to think how deep the rabbit hole goes how much of what i identify with and what i think is true or how i've been living my life is actually false or is actually just stuff that i've told myself to believe so at least asking myself that question that, that has saved me so much long-term trouble. It's, it's, of course, it, caused a lot of, it causes a lot of short-term pain, right? Because if I ask myself, like, if I have to say something that is going to hurt me and you in the short term, but it's true and it is as close to the truth as I can grasp and fathom as a man, I have to say that thing. I have to do that thing. And again, this is where it starts to conflict with, you know, well, Chris, just now you said what's going to magnify the most well-being and happiness for people that you care about. So why are you now saying this? Doesn't this, you, doesn't this contradict what you were saying earlier? Well, again, it depends on the assessment over time. Because I, and this is just a belief, okay, what I'm about to say is a belief statement. But I believe that whatever reality I can bring about that is most aligned with the truth as best as i can manage it of course i'm gonna get things wrong i can't get everything right but as best as i can picture and imagine it whatever that truth is the best that i can glimpse whatever reality that i can bring about that is most in line with that 
is going to be the best thing that I can do. And it is going to bring about the most long-term well-being, happiness, whatever, insert word here for the people that I love, people that I care about and myself. All right, so that is just a belief that I have where I, I really do think that, I think it was, maybe it was Nietzsche that said, uh, truth serves life. All right, so I really do believe that that's the case. That's just how I've noticed if when I operate like that in my life, it has tended to be true. So experientially, I have stacked up proof that that's the case. So again, that's another sacrifice, right? Short-term pain, but long-term, like, is this true? Can I be more truthful about my actions here? Is there something that I know to be true that I am just avoiding by taking this action? So those are the two questions that I wanted to leave you with in this video to just help you maybe make more righteous or virtuous decisions in your life. Am I just taking the easy way out here? And is there a way that I can be more truthful here? Am I telling the truth? Am I really, is this really true? Right? See what happens, <laughs> right? See what happens when you ask yourself those questions. Tell the truth and whatever the closest thing that you can manage to the truth and see what happens, right? The beautiful thing is that it's a mystery. <laughs> You're just going to have to see what happens, right? It's an adventure, as maybe Jordan Peterson would say, right? Telling the truth is an adventure. You don't know what's on the other side of it, right? You, it might be painful. It might not. You, you really don't know. So I'll leave you with that. And... I hope that this video has been useful for you. If it has, you know, we have discussions like this a lot in our community, the Winner's Circle. So that's the first link in the description. You can consider checking that out. Everyone in there, all the guys in there are great men who are, who are concerned with the pursuit of truth. And we are concerned with how to think, right? Knowing how to think and not just people telling you what to think, right? I could have spent this entire video uh, telling you, exactly what to think right like you know here are the steps that like but you know i'm not going to do that so consider checking that out if you're interested in that and if not you know leave a like subscribe if this video has helped you out comment let me know what you think you know let me know if you think these are stupid questions or stupid frameworks right but um yeah if not then i will see you in the next video peace